Everyone knows who Iron Man is. Hi. But would you believe us if we told you this wasn't always the case? Before Marvel Studios became a household name and began their Hollywood takeover, they actually had trouble getting one of our favorite films off the ground. There was a time when Iron Man was not well known outside of the comic book world. Iron Man has become a successful film franchise, but it didn't go without any hitches. Want to know what secrets Marvel has tried to keep under wraps? Watch our video and find out. Before we get started, blast that subscribe button to assemble along with our notification squad Push it! and stay up to date on the latest videos from CBR. I am Iron Man. Marvel didn't want Robert Downey Jr. Let's talk about Robert Downey Jr. By any measurement, his role as Tony Stark has made him a huge star and launched him back into the A-list. Wait, you mean he wasn't always an A-list superstar? Oh no. All performance issues. You know. Not uncommon. One out of five. Our dear Robert Downey Jr. had a dark period in his glamorous life. It's definitely hard to imagine anyone else playing the role. He is Tony Stark. However, we think that Marvel would rather have us forget they didn't want him originally. At one point, Nicolas Cage and Tom Cruise were interested in playing Stark, but in 2006, Favreau wanted to cast an unknown actor, believing that Iron Man himself was the star and not to be overshadowed by the superstar actor playing him. Eventually, Favreau came to think Downey Jr. was the best choice, but in 2006, Downey Jr. was known more for his battles with addiction than acting. Marvel execs flat out said they wouldn't hire Downey Jr. at any price. However, he won them over, and it paid off. What a Tony Stark thing to do. And three, two, one. Everyone thought it would bomb. In today's Hollywood, Marvel Studios is synonymous with success and is the epitome of what good superhero movies should be. It seems like they can do no wrong, right? They've created a string of hit movies with big box office and critical acclaim. With the exception of a few less than spectacular bunch, we're looking at you, Thor. You think this is funny? But it's hard to believe until very recently, Marvel has had a much worse reputation in the biz. Yeah, it's hard to believe even saying that out loud, but hey, it's true. Iron Man was Marvel's first self-financed movie under the production of Marvel Studios, and they teamed with Paramount Pictures as their distributor. When Marvel announced they would begin producing their own movies, it was collectively scoffed at. Very few people in Hollywood thought a company could go from making comic books to making movies. Ludicrous, right? Well, look at Marvel now, taking over Hollywood and being awesome. There was also a concern because not many people outside comics knew about Iron Man. Associate producer Jeremy Latcham admitted they had trouble getting the script because almost 30 writers turned down the project, even offering to do rewrites, but they're all regretting their choices now, huh? You happy now? <laughs> The Low Budget Version Although it was X-Men that started the comic book frenzy technically, it was Iron Man that propelled Marvel forward. It was, after all, Marvel Studios' first film, and when Iron Man hit theaters in 2008, it seemed like a bolt from out of the blue, perfectly formed for maximum impact in Hollywood. That's not bad. Yet if Hollywood had its way, the first big screen adaptation of Iron Man would have been way less exciting. The development of the first Iron Man movie started way back in 1990, when Universal Studios bought the movie rights for Iron Man. Back then, they never imagined or planned for it to be a major summer blockbuster. No, they were planning to make a low-budget movie with Stuart Gordon as the director. At the time, Gordon was known for his adaptation of The Reanimator in 1985. The year before the deal, he had made the giant robot movie Robot Jocks. We can only imagine what the movie would have looked like. Absolutely ridiculous. It would have totally been a sci-fi masterpiece. Totally different than the snappy, colorful, sassy, and action-packed Iron Man we have today. What do you think it would have looked like? Badge. Badge. Badge, guys. I put a memo in the toilet. Come on. John Favreau was fourth. You might know John Favreau as an actor as well as a writer, producer, and director. Oh yes, he's a man of many talents. And as a director, John Favreau created a real masterpiece with Iron Man. It was an underdog of a movie that people really didn't believe in at first, but he definitely blew us all out of the water. He brilliantly balanced the action of a power suit fighting terrorists with the drama of a man seeking redemption. It was well written and kept us intrigued as it was not just a superhero movie, it was a much deeper story. He also set the tone for future Marvel films with a mix of humor and emotion, while also staying faithful to the comic book roots. That's why Marvel doesn't want to talk about how they didn't want him. Favreau was actually the last in a long list of directors. Flip the screen and then we can get started. I'm not a tech genius like you. Just, just trust me. Get down here. Flip the screen. Then I can see what I they're doing. I don't have to flip the screen. At one point, Quentin Tarantino wanted to write and direct Iron Man. Later on, Joss Whedon was in talks to direct. Favreau wasn't hired until 2006, and that was mainly because he had worked with producer Avi Arad 
had on Daredevil. He turned out to be the right man, but it took a while to get there. Next time, baby. Howard made more money. Another thing Marvel doesn't talk about is Terrence Howard, the actor who played Jim Rhodey Rhodes in the first Iron Man. If you've seen all the Iron Man films, you might recall that Rhodey was later replaced by actor Don Cheadle. Rhodey was the long-suffering best friend and government minder of Tony Stark. It was suggested that Rhodey would become the comic book character War Machine in later movies. Another tidbit that might surprise you is that from a financial point of view, Terrence Howard was actually the star. Okay, what? We know you're probably thinking, hey, wait a minute, Robert Downey Jr. is the star, what do you mean? Well, back in 2008, Howard was coming off an Academy Award nomination for Best Actor in the movie Hustle and Flow, and his career was flying high, especially compared to Robert Downey Jr. at that time. At 4.5 million, Howard was actually the highest paid cast member in Iron Man, more than Robert Downey Jr. Unfortunately, things didn't work out for him in the end because of financial issues for the next film. We have five miles outside of Rose Hill, Tennessee. Why? Jarvis, not my idea. I prepared a flight plan. This was the location. Jarvis didn't care. In the original comic books, Jarvis was Tony Stark's loyal butler for decades. Which makes sense, as Jarvis sounds like a name for a cartoon butler, don't you think? But John Favreau decided he would be too similar to Batman's Alfred. Instead, Favreau made the creative decision to make Jarvis into an artificial intelligence called Jarvis, who controlled Stark's home and equipment. Jarvis was just a natural language UI. Now he runs the Iron Legion. He runs more of the business than anyone besides Pepper. Mm -hmm. Top of the line. Fun fact, if Jarvis sounds a bit familiar, Hello, Dr. Battle. It's because he was voiced by Paul Bettany, who later went on to become the Vision in Avengers Age of Ultron. Bettany's such a huge part of the Avengers that Marvel probably wouldn't be happy talking about the truth, which is he didn't care about Iron Man at first. That's true, he hates you the most. He only did the voiceover for Jarvis as a favor to Favreau, and he never even got the complete script, so he had no idea what the movie was about. As far as we know, he still doesn't, because he said many times in the past he never watched any of the Iron Man movies. Oh, Jarvis, how could you? Because you broke the law. Yeah. I didn't make you. You read it, you broke it. All right, you're all grown up, you got a wife and kids. I don't understand. Why didn't you think about them before you chose the wrong side? Prison Experience Iron Man star Robert Downey Jr. is the epitome of a success story. Many comic book fans, adults and children alike, look to him as an inspiration today. Nice work, kid which is one of the reasons he doesn't really like to talk about his past substance abuse problems and time in prison. He refuses to outright talk about it. He famously walked out of a 2015 interview where someone tried to bring it up. Give me a break! Some people just can't take no for an answer, can they? However, there was a time when he did like to talk about it, and that was when his addiction and prison experience was used in the movie. What part of the movie, you might be wondering? Favreau has said he felt Downey Jr.'s public life and fall had parallels in Stark's celebrity life and redemption. To best channel a character, it's important to find similarities within yourself, and so his background became a part of the movie. There was even a practical level where Downey Jr. gave advice on prison tools, like using a sock as a tea bag in the Afghanistan scenes. That mix of darkness and light is what made his role so great. Iron Man, that's kind of catchy. It's got a nice ring to it. I mean, it's not technically accurate. This suit's a gold titanium alloy. The Spy Photo If you're like us, you pride yourself on finding hidden clues and references in Marvel films. Let's see if you caught this one. There's a moment in the theatrical release of Iron Man that you probably never noticed, but almost cost Marvel millions. Wondering what it could be? Well, in one of the final scenes in the movie, Tony Stark is reading a newspaper titled, Who is the Iron Man? On the cover is a blurry photo of Iron Man on it. No big deal, right? It's just a prop photo taken for the film? Well, the photo actually has a complex history. It's worth billions. Finance is so weird. The photo was originally released in May 2007 on the internet. It was taken by freelance photographer Ronnie Adams during filming of Iron Man. Paramount tried to sue the website that released the photo, but it was taken legally, so the negative backlash led them to back off. Adams later sued over the use of the photo because Paramount hadn't got permission to use it in the movie. Adams ended up winning this round because Marvel ended up removing the photo from the DVD and later releases. You look fantastic. Why, thank you very but much. But that's unprofessional. What's on the docket? You have a 9.30 dinner. Perfect. I'll be there at 11. This is us. Needed a ton of promotion. In the comic book community, Iron Man needs no introduction. Iron Man is one of the most popular superheroes in comics and was one of the four founding members of the Avengers, along with Thor, Hulk, and Captain America. He's an icon in the Marvel Universe. Yet in 2006, Marvel had a problem they don't often talk about. No one outside of comics knew who he was, especially compared to Spider-Man or the Hulk. Well, that's hard to believe considering his status now, but to be fair, Spider-Man and Hulk are 
already had films out at this time. This was Iron Man's big break. Marvel actually did focus groups to try to figure out how to make Iron Man more popular and discovered most people weren't interested because they thought he was a robot. He's not a robot, but come on, people. What's wrong with robots? They're awesome. A machine. So it doesn't count. No, it's not like a person lifting the hammer. Right. Different rules for us. Nice guy. Artificial. Marvel started a campaign making three short animated films aimed at kids called Iron Man Advertorials. They released on the internet to build excitement. They also launched a huge media blitz ahead of the movie focused on Stark instead of the armor. Smart move, considering the film also focuses more on Tony Stark the man and not so much on the Iron Man suit. Who the hell are you? Nick Fury, director of S.H.I.E.L.D. I'm here to talk to you about the Avenger Initiative. Easter eggs, not connections. If there's anything that fans love more than seeing their favorite comic book characters on screen, it's finding hidden Easter eggs and connections. The original Iron Man was praised for its connections made to the Marvel Universe. Some of its moments and cameos even led to other movies. For example, fans saw Captain America's shield in Stark's lab and Nick Fury in the after credits scene. You know what this is? It's exactly what I need to make this work. It's all about the little things, isn't it? It's like Marvel always had a master plan. But while Marvel wants to claim it was always their plan to make hidden references to other movies, it was really just a goof. The real story is that Favreau and Downey Jr. are huge comic book fans, as were many of the crew, and they wanted to make little jokes about other characters in comic history. The shield was just another gag by one of the special effects technicians, and Marvel wasn't even sure anyone would notice it. I noticed. Nick Fury's cameo was a last-minute addition for fun, which led directly to the studio's dream of making the Avengers movie. It just happened to work out. It just goes to show that wishful thinking sometimes ends up working out. <laughs> yeah, I can fly. Well, there you have it, folks. Those were some of the secrets about the Iron Man films. Were any of these surprising? Did you already know some of these? Did we forget any? Let us know in the comments below. And while you're here, don't forget to check out more awesome videos in our playlist and like and share our video. Thanks for watching.